Hello, I'm here with you with my wonderful assistant Kat and we are going to show you how to make homemade agar today so that you can grow some nice bacteria. So here are the things that you are going to need. You're going to need petri dishes. If you're in life science, you may still have some petri dishes so you can use those. If you don't have petri dishes, there are some substitutes that you can use. You can use aluminum um, cupcake holders those will work nicely. Or you can even use any kind of Tupperware that you have that you can do an airtight seal. Um, Tupperware will work as well. So what we're going to do to make our agar, you need four cups of water. You need four beef bouillon cubes. You need eight teaspoons of sugar. And then you need four packets of unflavored gelatin. And it's very easy to find at the grocery store. And you also need a saucepan. So what you're going to do is you're going to mix your four cups of water with your four gelatin packets. So Kai, if you'll pour that water into our saucepan. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that right there, don't spill any, is two cups of water. So I need to get, once he pours that in, I need to get two more cups of water. So if you'll, you will pour that into the saucepan as well. Okay. Then we're going to pour in our four gelatin packets and we're going to put it over heat. So I'm going to move over to the stove so that we can do that. Okay, so now we're over at the stove and we have our safety glasses on for our science experiment because that's always important. And we are going to, we've got our four cups of water in our saucepan, so now we're going to mix in our four envelopes of jello. So Kai, can you get that in there? Make sure you get it all in there. It doesn't look good, Jello. I'm going to do the other two. Actually, you do one and I'll do the other. Okay. Alright, we're going to turn the stove on, so Kai, be careful. Don't touch it. We're going to turn it on medium heat. And we're going to stir this in. And then we need to put in our 8 teaspoons of sugar. So Kai, can you put in our 8 teaspoons of sugar? I'll be careful. And then our four bouillon cubes, so can you put those in? Don't splash it. Better. And you just want to heat this until it comes to a bowl, and you need to constantly stir it. And then once it comes to a bowl, you will remove it from the heat. And then I'll show you what to do to cool your agar off. Uh-oh, you've taken your glasses off. You better put them back on. Okay, so now our mixture is now boiling, and so we'll show you that. Now what we want to do is we want to remove it from the heat and let it cool for three to five minutes before we pour it into our Petri dishes. So let me show you what that looks like. So here is our boiling liquid, and so now we'll let it cool off for three to five minutes before we fill our um, Petri dishes. Okay, we are back and now we've added another scientist to our group. We have let our liquid solution cool off for, we've actually let ours cool off a little more than five minutes. So now what we need to do is we need to pour it into our Petri dishes. So, um, you're going to pour it about two-thirds full. Let's see if this pours okay. I'm actually spilling some, but that's okay. Alright, and this makes a lot of liquid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it in here, and I'm actually going to fill up my four Tupperwares as well. Okay, so I've actually transferred it to a container where I can pour it a little bit easier because it was too hard to pour out of the saucepan. The important thing is that everything is cleaned and sterilized. So all my dishes have been cleaned. I cleaned this. I cleaned our countertop to avoid contaminating our mixture. So I'm going to fill these just about a third of the way full. And then we will seal each of our Petri dishes and our little Tupperwares here. And we're going to put these in the refrigerator for about two to three hours to allow this gelatin to set 
And then we will swab and put our germs on there to see if they grow. Okay. What?